Hey everybody, it's James with TheSpreadKing.com again. Today we're going to go back to basics. We're going to go back to mixing mud. I know a lot of people go, oh man, I already know how to do that. But you'd be surprised the amount of people and the amount of guys I fire because they don't know how to mix mud properly. You know, people uh, a lot of times use these. These aren't too good. They kill your back. They don't mix it good enough. They're garbage. This is a new beater from Sheetrock, USG, uh, really heavy. Looks cool, looks fancy, really heavy. Basically the best beater that I've used over the years, been doing this for almost 20 years, is this one. It's a regular paddle type, really light, really flimsy, spins the mud well. Excellent choice. Another thing you're going to use is a 3 8 drill. This is a big boy drill. I bought this for 130 bucks, probably about 10 years ago. Still going, change the brushes once. They're awesome. Very powerful drill. Can whip up anything from hot mud to the thickest muds. Another thing you want to steer clear of are these. These type of little beaters don't work very well for the real world. They'll, you'll be there for an hour. Good for mixing little amounts of hot mud or doing other things in the garage, but not good for mixing mud. Another thing you want to use is a clean bucket. I know it sounds crazy that I'm even talking about this, but it's true. You don't want your bucket to look like that, full of junk. You want your bucket to be nice and clean. So now that we got everything we need, good drill, good paddle, clean bucket, we're going to take it from there. All right, guys, here we go. Got our two buckets, got some clean water, beater paddle. And what we got here is some Westpac Materials Blue Dot. Uh, if you have to use all-purpose, get it at your Home Depot or Lowe's. That's the all-purpose uh, taping and topping mud to tape with. That's fine. But if you're really doing a good-sized house and you want your tape joints to never blister, get the blue dot. Uh, I'm in California, so I don't know what you guys got on the East Coast. It's all a little different. So what we're going to do is first open up the box. This is a little old from sitting in my garage, but it'll be fine. Take off the little spinner, wire tie, whatever it is. Now we're going to open mud every single time at the same time. We're going to open it up, flap the plastic over, dump it in, put the plastic back in the box every single time so we don't make a mess on our job site. Boxes are all stacked up neat, plastic inside. Some guys just open it up, dump the mud out, throw the boxes, you're tripping and falling all over them all day. No good. So, pour the mud in. Try not to splash it. Leave the plastic in there. Fold down your things from the box. That's the thing. When people leave them open like this, they're hanging all over the job site. It's no good. Put your plastic inside. Every single time, same way. Same exact way. Now, here's your good beater. I also use a sponge instead of always constantly leaning over picking up the bucket. Uh, saves on the back fatigue. Usually about three or four sponges usually gets it, but I'm just doing it kind of thick right now just to show you guys. Your drill. Pop it in. Just hand tight. You don't need any chucks or anything like that. And before you get just the turning on the drill full blast, you want to kind of move it around a little bit. Get it to barely mix up that mud just a little bit. Hand tight on the drill. And I give her a couple little whips. And next you know she's going. If you notice, full blast right here. Mud's mixed. I barely got any water on the floor. Got one little speckle of mud, but pretty much when you use a sponge, take your time with the drill, you won't make a big mess. Good for taping. Top down your drill. Give it a couple of these. Clean up the beater so really you don't drop a drop. Good to go. If you're going to go walk it through somebody's house, might even want to clean the edges. Just to keep it perfect. Now it's totally ready to go, ready to tape. If you're going to be using a bazooka, you're going to want to thin this down way more, probably about three or four more sponges. 
I use the sponge because that the job I'm always constantly cleaning my hands, cleaning some door jams or something. I'm trying to keep it real clean. Homeowners love cleanliness. So sponge works for me. And there it is, straight from the pros. Not the hairy homeowner way, the contractor way. Remember, we're showing you details, details, details. Nobody on the internet is showing you the contractor way, the efficient way of doing things. That's what I'm trying to do at thespraking.com. Check us out over there, or send me an email, or leave a comment here on YouTube. Remember, in the next few months, we're going to be showing you all sorts of ways. How to scrape acoustic right, how to do taping right, how to keep everything clean, how to even set up your truck. Every way. And we're going to venture off into other things too, but right now we're tackling drywall because that's what the Spray King does.